All right, so let's start off with variables and data types in Kotlin. Now I'm still in the same project here learning Kotlin, but I removed some of the distracting elements of the UI because in the next few lectures, we're actually gonna spend our time in the Kotlin REPL. Now REPL refers to read, evaluate, print loop. So it's like a console that allows you to write expressions in Kotlin or commands and then just run them one by one to see what the result is. So to do that, we're gonna to go to Tools, Kotlin, and then to the Kotlin REPL. So this is where we're gonna spend our time in the next few lectures, so get yourself comfortable. And we're gonna choose Context Module, just the whole project. Doesn't really matter in our case because we're only interested in Kotlin itself. So now I'm gonna increase the size of this because this is really what we wanna focus on now. And let me also increase the font size here in this screen. I'm not sure if there's a better way to do this in this console. Well, let me just go ahead and do it like this so that you can all see what I'm typing. So let's talk now about variables and data types in Kotlin. And remember that every line of code that you write in here you could also write in an actual Kotlin file, like for example, inside a function in the main activity. So it's still the same kind of code, but it, this just allows us to run each line by itself and just see what it does. Now, first of all, there are two basic ways to create a variable in Kotlin. The first one is to use the var keyword and then just say, for example, var age equals 24. And as it mentioned before, so when there's nothing here, control plus enter to execute. So when we have this, I can press control enter and it's gonna create this variable. So basically it's gonna execute this line of code. So in this case, it's gonna create the variable and I can verify that by just typing in H here. And it's also gonna actually suggest that because now this variable exists. And now pressing Control Enter again will actually evaluate that expression. So it's going to come back with 24 here. So if the line of code that we use has a return type or a value, in other words, if it's an expression, then it's going to print out the value of the expression. But if it's just a statement like here, which doesn't have a value, it's not going to print anything. Now there are several things to notice here already. First of all, we didn't have to specify the type of the variable h explicitly, even though we could. And also there's no semicolon here. And this is not just in the Kotlin REPL, but we just don't need any semicolon in Kotlin, as you might have seen from the main activity code. But now let's go back to the type here. It looks a bit like Python code or JavaScript code, but it's very different because it's still strictly typed. Kotlin is a strictly typed language even though you can write code like that, which is allowed because Kotlin can actually infer the type. If you write h is 24, then Kotlin will automatically infer that the variable h here should have a type of int and it should be assigned to 24. So that's completely equivalent to the line above. But if you want to give an explicit type, you can do it like this by using it as a suffix to the variable name, then writing a colon, and then the type of the variable. Now here you can also see that in contrast to Java, this is an object and not a primitive type. So in Kotlin there are only objects, so this also goes for doubles, booleans, and so on. But before we go into all the different data types, let's actually first look at the second way that we can create variables in Kotlin. And it's actually also the more important way to be honest, because the second way is to use val and then say, for example, name equals Peter. And this way we now have created an immutable variable. So in contrast to age, where I can say age is suddenly 25, let's say, because someone had a birthday, I cannot do that with the name. So I cannot say name equals, let's say Peter S because name, and it's already gonna mark this in red here, is a val, so it's an immutable variable. And I can make this fix to make the variable mutable, but I don't wanna do that. Instead, I'm gonna to try to do this and it's gonna say illegal access error. 
because this with val cannot be overwritten. This is the exact same thing as in Java when you add the final modifier to a variable. And in Kotlin you should always prefer val over var when it's possible. That's one of the main concepts in Kotlin and we're actually going to talk about that in more detail later on. Immutability is a core concept in Kotlin, so we're going to discuss that in more detail in the next lecture. But for now, let's take a look at all the data types. So we can also say, for example, val is developer, and we could explicitly say that this is of type boolean equals true, and that's going to create a boolean variable. We also have the type double for double values, float for float values, they're all mapped to Java in the exact same way. You also have char, and you can also see every time that this starts with an uppercase letter, so it's always a class, and you're also always creating an object of it when you create a variable. So this is one of the differences from Java. And similarly, you have short and long. And what's left, there's also byte, um, but basically every type that you have in Java you're just going to have that in Kotlin as well, but you're going to have to write an uppercase letter at the beginning. So what you should take away from this lecture is to prefer val over var. So val is greater than var, which of course not a valid expression here, but you should use val whenever possible and maybe even redesign your code if you can't make a variable a value or immutable and only use var if it's really necessary or just given by your use case or domain. And also, just like in Java, you should try to avoid using float and instead use double because of machine precision and the trouble you can run into with floats not being exact enough to really compare them securely. Next thing to take away is that you can make use of Colin's type inference so that you don't have to specify the type of a variable explicitly. So for example, title equals Cullen for beginners. And this is just the exact same thing as writing val title of type string equals some string. So in many cases, this is clear from the context. So Cullen can easily infer the type and anyone reading your code is also going to be sure what the type of the variable is going to be. Like here, for example, of course, title is going to be a string. And here, of course, h is going to be an integer. And remember that it's not like JavaScript or Python, but once you have this line, h has the fixed type of integer and you can only assign integers to it. So type safety in Kotlin is a given, just like in Java, maybe even more in Kotlin. So there's no need to worry about that, even though you can write code like this, with, which might look to a beginner as if there's no type safety or no static typing in Kotlin. All right, so those are the main takeaways for variables in Kotlin and also what data types are available. So let's move on now to the next lecture to discuss the concept of immutability in more detail.